This is something we've just uh, made to operate a carburetor because uh, it wasn't uh, the cable wasn't in any good shape. But it, what it does for video wise, it gives us an opportunity to. You guys can kind of get closer to yourself here. Inside these cables, it just looks like it's a piece of rubber, but it's actually steel wound. That's what really gives it its strength, right? Because we're gonna bend around corners and so on. But I don't know if you can see this in the video here. There's a plastic sheathing between the cable and the steel wound. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, that plastic sheathing is uh, like basically a tube. It looks, it looks like it's cut up here because we had to cut the cable off, but just understand the components. So you got a wire, plastic tubing, steel shroud, and then your rubber coating. So if this ever gets nicked, you can see that you, if you nick any of this, it usually goes through all of it, and then that's how we get a bunch of rust down in here. So this cable here, can you see where it's pretty rusty? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you'll be able to really see that, but um, what you won't be able to see on the video so much is that <clears throat> it's, it's pretty sticky, okay? So what we have to combat this, and it's a regular maintenance item that you'll see inside your service manuals, is uh, to lubricate the cables over time. Now, sometimes these cables, you'll see where people sell little needles where you can inject oil. And what this is, is this is gonna allow us to put uh, a penetrating lubricant. Now, they actually sell cable lube, by the way, too. And some people like white lithium grease because it dries and it doesn't attract dirt as much. I'm a big fan of this just because I'm gonna lubricate my cables over time. If they get sticky, what am I gonna do? Lube them up. I'm gonna lube them up. So the idea is all, uh, obviously to catch it ahead of time too. Here's the problem, people hate these, okay? Most people. It's because they don't know how to use it to get the benefit of it and they think it's just such a pain in the butt. And what we have here, if you look at the tool itself, you can see that it's almost closed on that end. And as we flip it around, you see how it's larger? Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, so the larger end is typically what you're gonna put around, uh, I'm loosen this up a bit here with the sharp edge. I don't wanna hurt the, hurt the tool here. And on the outside here, it's just gonna be cable. And the idea of this large end is that's gonna fit whatever housing, but this one's so big that it's, it's gonna leak here. And that's why people don't like it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So then you just take and you snug this up. And this, these newer ones have two thumbs on it. The old ones only had one. And it, you couldn't get it real even, so you'd have it where this would kick sideways and it would really leak. So I'm gonna flip this around so I'm left-handed where the camera is here. Without a doubt, we've got a big old gaping hole there, don't we? Yep. Okay, the idea is, is that by, we're gonna force fluid through the sheathing down until it literally starts to escape out the other end. So half a dozen more of the other, yeah, safety glasses on. I'm gonna go ahead and insert that in there. Get this sh shooken up. Now this is where I'm gonna ask for some help. Can uh, you kind of hold that in the air? Just kind of support it. It's gonna make it easier to not uh, be a problem here. Now before I do that, what I need to do, and this is the part that people miss, is I need to go ahead and we're going to take and move this whole thing down here. Can you straighten out those rags for me? Okay, just so that hopefully the camera can see it. Well, when we start having the lubricant come out this end, we're done. Makes sense. We're going to soak this whole rag up. Maybe the best thing to do is a new cable. A lot of times the cable might be 12, 15 bucks. And let's see, somebody want to hold that end and not in your face. If this were a normal cable that didn't have the busted up end and everything else, grip that a little tighter there. The tighter he can grip that, hopefully he's going to seal that to where we can get that fluid to come out the other end. Let's try and focus on that other end there. Okay, see how it's just running out his hand right now? Yeah. yeah. Okay, it's just dripping. That's because it's, it's leaking so much it's tearing, but it's working its way down here too. So we're going to be smart. While you focus on that side, we're gonna lift up in the air and try and let gravity help us too, because it's gonna run down better. Make sense? So let's go up. There it comes. Yeah. Let's see that. Okay. If I see lube coming out this end, then I might choose to switch down to that side. Now, the thing it's really gonna tell us is as soon as we push the wire through, we'll see if it's wet. Is it wet? It looks wet. Yep, so we got our lube down through there and you can definitely feel a dramatic change now. So, um, I've seen some people take, put this on a drill 
and then spin it real slow on a drill. Because what's happening is, we, since we understand how the cable is made, it's made in that plastic housing, we're not gonna put like huge RPM. If we just creep a drill, just creep it along. If there is some rust that's built up in there, spinning that around in there will just kind of break it free. Regardless, what we're doing is the save the day deal just so we can kind of move forward with the lab here. If this means getting your customer to ride for the weekend, if the cable has any breaks or tears or frays or anything like that, you can't risk it all. It's junk. I mean, what I do when I see stuff like this is I go up and I just cut the cable. I don't give them an option. If they want to be mad about it, they can be mad about it. But I do not want to go out and have stuck throttle. And you got to remember, we have uh, drum brakes out there that have cables on there. You wouldn't want where somebody's uh, brake locks up or something else. So that's what we got going on. Hey there. Just want to add a couple of points here that anytime we're doing any of these tips uh, and, and uh, procedural videos, there, there's always going to be a lot of opinions and uh, a lot of different ways to do something. So first off, I just wanted to state that at any time there's any doubt, I mentioned this a little bit, replace the cable. Uh, and I prefer OEM, original equipment cables. Uh, you don't have to question it. You don't have to think about it. it's going to fit for the exact year, make, model, and so on. Uh, but I have used aftermarket cables, like out of your uh, aftermarket parts catalogs. Once again, a lot of times you're going to get what you pay for, so I want you to think about that and consider it. The biggest thing about this video is that you're seeing a tool that allows you to do some maintenance on cables to extend their life. Waiting to lubricate the cable once it's rusted or severely uh, stuck, it, it's done. You have to start over. You need a new cable for a new life. So just be careful thinking about those things. Uh, look at your maintenance schedules. Look where they actually say lubricate, adjust. Um, cables. Uh, we have other videos that talk about how to adjust these cables and free play and measurements and things like that. So if you don't know, keep digging in, uh, gather all the research you need and all the training and opportunities to uh, appropriately uh, service and uh, uh, take care of your cables.